thank you. Yeah, uh, my name is Markus Jut. Uh, I work as a lead software engineer in, uh, in a company called Tomorrow Tech. Uh, I come from the north, Finland. Uh, I'm here to talk about uh, our experience on using uh, Corda in, in real estate trading in Finland. Um, and especially since this is only 15 minutes, uh, I'm going to focus on, on how we are doing data modeling and especially the privacy point of view. Uh, so yeah, uh, just a few words about our company. So uh, this is a Finnish-based uh, startup company I'm working, Tomorrow Tech. We are uh, making uh, digital products and our first product is uh, Dias platform, which, uh, which is now in use in Finland. Uh, we put it live just before the summer and the platform is used for making uh, it, it for end users like consumers to sell and buy apartments in Finland digitally. So, uh, and uh, our platform is a platform that the consumers, the people who are selling and buying the apartments, they are using it. Then there are real estate agents, of course, that's that they are involved, they are using our platform. And then, then the big part of this is of course that uh, Typically, at least in Finland, most of the people, when they are buying apartments, they have to get the mortgage. So the banks are involved in this process that there's always a uh, mortgage from the one bank and, and, and so on. And also at the moment in Finland, um, the, what we are now doing, the actual ownership of the house is still, still in a paper format, usually in, in some bank's vault, and then it's transferred to another vault, vault during this process. Uh, uh, we are running this uh, uh, as a Corda, private business network. We are currently having, uh, let's say, most of the major Finnish uh, banks uh, are using this system and also most of the big, big uh, real estate agents companies are, are already using the system. Also, also this, there are integrations to certain tax, uh, certain government offices like tax, tax administration. It's like there's like a transfer tax that you have to pay when you are uh, by buying an uh, apartment. The idea with the DIAS is that our platform, platform will take care of all of the government uh, registry things and all, the, all that kind of stuff. Uh, okay. So let's jump into how we have modeled this. Uh, in our case, uh, every bank has their own vault. It's like every bank has their own Corda node. Uh, that's that's very important for for that all the like the bank relevant data is in in in, in their own own storage. Then, this is like now one of the design choices with the current version of of Corda. Uh, Initiators, in this case, they, they are real estate agencies and construction companies. They, they will start the, the process. Uh, in that case, in Finland, it's typical that there are like hundreds, hundreds of small real estate agencies. So at the moment, it's not cost effective to run Corda node for all, all of them. So this is one of the design choices that, that we had to do. So. We are now running running uh, just one database for them, and then we are using like let's put traditional ways for securing the access to data. Um, our data model, we this is actually just a small part of it. So that's how we model model the data. So overall, uh, in our case, there's usually three parties involved in in all the transaction. There is this initiator, the real estate agent. Then there is a buyer bank and seller bank. So, so those are the Corda participants. And, uh, and of course, as you all know, in Corda it's, it's possible to uh, just to store the data to those bank ledgers that are involved in this transaction. So that's, that's normal stuff. Uh, but for data privacy reasons, we wanted to go even further. So. Uh, you can see, for example, there 
on, on the bottom, like there is this real Tor bank account. It's an example of, of data that actually the seller bank is uh, in, in our process is paying the um, realtor commission. And it's not up to buyer bank to even know that this exists. So we actually have modeled the data in that way when we store it. So we can like even like field level say that this field goes to only this bank ledger. And that's how this is implemented is uh, using multiple uh, Kotlin uh, linear states. So this uh, shared state, this is, this is a, a linear state that has uh, three participant, participants, uh, the buyer bank, seller bank and the initiator. And then we have like multiple different combinations. For example, if there's certain data that should be only in the seller bank and, and initiator ledger, then, then we have a separate uh, linear state for that data. And that uh, linear state has only two participants. In the end, when we are doing the actual transaction, then it will just have multiple input and output states and in a contract level we are checking that all of these linear states uh, uh, like they have the same linear ID and they are part of the same transaction. But this, is, this makes it possible to, to even in, in field level say what goes into what ledger in, in a transaction. Uh, for data evolution uh, we use implicit upgrades. Um, so as I said, like we've been running this in production now a few months and already, even though we plan our data ahead a lot, still, still in some cases we have to be able to change the data or add, add data there. And therefore we are using the Corda implicit upgrade mechanism. Uh, in here, the authorization type is a new field that was added later on. And and therefore, uh, we, all, we, we like to keep our data model very clean. So we try to avoid using uh, nullable fields. So even when we are adding new fields, they are now non-nullable. And that therefore, you have to use this uh, uh, annotation for setting a default value. Uh, like in this case, for, uh, for the old stuff in a ledger, the, it's always putting this certain uh, shares ownership uh, authorization type um, uh, as a default. Uh, then uh, I, this is uh, also one uh, data privacy thing and for us like the GDPR is very important. So like uh, the law states that we can uh, have all the data related to the consumer who is buying. Anyway, we have to know who is buying and what have you. That's like very important uh, uh, um, information. But for audit logs, we also like to collect data like who, who was the bank clerk who actually, for example, ap approved this transaction and that kind of stuff. And we don't want to store like the person's name or anything into our ledger. Instead, with banks, we are using these surrogate IDs. So we collect user IDs and then basically in this case, the bank has a responsibility. Like if there is a case that we have to really know who was the person, then we can ask from the bank side who was, who was this person and we will have the full audit log what this person did. And the same thing we are using uh, with real estate agents too, so that we try to only keep this ID in our database. And it's like, that's uh, good for privacy reasons, but also like in next slide I'm talking about GDPR. So that's also something that we don't store their personal in information in, in, in the blockchain. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, and then, then about a uh, longer data life cycle. Uh, basically now we are able to store the data for 10 years, but actually after that we should be able to remove data from, from the ledger. And the way we have designed the system is that uh, instead of uh, modeling uh, like 
modeling linear we don't use the real estate property as such as long long uh, chain instead of instead always uh, one trade process is one linear state so then then after the trade is completed we can consume the whole chain and like we can say that it's settled and then theoretically we can remove the whole chain and still keep the blockchain like uh, clean and what when I'm saying th theoretically this is the last thing uh, now what actually uh, is going to happen then actually I'm um, there will be a talk today about vault recycler which is a tool that ac actually R3 is building for actually archiving consumed states which then perfectly fits to our data model that we, we are anyway consuming them then there will be a tool for actually archiving uh, those stuff. Then and another future thing is that we are looking into the Corda accounts which might be a solution for our shared world uh, problem we have with the real estate agents. Okay. I think so. you're so there's no App at the, oh God, that freaks me out when that happens. Um, there's no questions by the app at the moment, but if anybody's got any questions, more room, you can shout. Hands up. I don't, I can't give uh, numbers uh, at the moment. Of course, we are in early stages. Overall, uh, I can say that, that, that in Finland, 70,000 70, apartments are sale like sold per year so if we are we manage to sell everything then every year then it's 70,000 per year so moderate volumes let's put that way but like we are ramping up now and let's see uh, like currently like well, the real estate agents are there, but we are also going to support, for example, uh, construction companies. Like uh, that's another case in Finland when you are building a new house, then actually you can start the trade process already when your construction company is building the house. That will be the uh, a participant added to this later. No, no, at, at least not yet. So, and, and, and also in Finland, they are, the government registry is not available yet. They are building it and we will be integrating into it, but they, it's a traditional centralized system. Yeah, yeah, yeah now the current version is, 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 is on top of that paper paste. From the end user point of view, like he or she doesn't see any papers, but like in the end, banks are actually moving papers from a, from one bank to another bank. Okay, so the, the democratic migration will be from a business process perspective. Uh, the network, have you, uh, can you kind of prove that there is a, an optimization in the whole process? So for example, if you have mortgages in a property or if you have encumbrances that is another block on a property from a land registry perspective, uh, do you guys work with them closely? Yeah, yeah, we are, yeah, we are work, working. Yeah, so it's like, like what, what we are, like in business sense, like we are trying to improve the process. And, and like I didn't s talk about the earlier, pro earlier, in like earlier process with, uh, without our software, you actually, all the people have to go together to bank at the same time and uh, sign the papers. And it, it usually t might take like one month that before you get uh, this meeting because you have to get all the people in the same room. So this like should speed up the process a lot. Thank you.